Uh, speaker, I'm going to ask my first question this morning to the Minister of Long-Term Care, and I'm going to start by quoting directly uh, from the Commission report. 26 residents died due to dehydration prior to the arrival of the Canadian Armed Forces team due to the lack of staff to care for them. They died when all they needed was water and a wipe down. Yesterday, this minister repeatedly refused to answer a basic question. When did this minister responsible for long-term care know that seniors in long-term care were dying from neglect and dehydration? Thank you, Speaker. Uh, any loss of life in these circumstances during this pandemic have, have been, has been tragic. And the reason we called in the military, the Canadian Armed Forces, was because all the measures that had been taken uh, were, were not sufficient to address the growing demand. And that is why they were called upon. Uh, we know that the staffing collapse uh, in these homes from, from multiple reasons uh, is what necessitated calling in the military. It still took time to get them into the home, and COVID uh, was, was a very rapid threat. So I've said before that I am committed to making sure that long-term care is a better place to live, a better place to work. These lives lost cannot Response. be in vain. We will improve these conditions, and that is currently what we're doing with the staffing, uh, the new capacity, the IPAC measures. We are working to make sure that these lies were not lost. Thank you very much. <laughs> Supplementary question. Uh, well, Speaker, the minister is still not responding to the question. The Minister of Health hasn't responded to questions. Nobody on that side of the House is taking any responsibility. They're not being accountable for what happened to long-term care with COVID-19. In fact, it's clear that government ministers knew exactly what was going on in long-term care. In fact, the CEO of the uh, RNAO, Doris Grinspan, uh, gave a testimony to the commission uh, that uh, says the Minister of Treasury Board and Finance was calling her to try to get help for Orchard Villa. And I quote from the Commission's report from Doris's testimony. So I got the phone call at about 11 o'clock p.m. one day, and in that phone call was the minister telling me, can I help with Orchard Villa before things were public, that it was a disaster what had happened with the residents. Speaker, did this Member, did this Minister of Long-Term Care receive the same kind of panicked calls from the Minister of Finance with the same kind of information and the same kind of request for help? Thank you, Speaker. I have said time and time again uh, that I take responsibility for this, for the well-being of the residents, for the, for the staff and for the families. And in fact, that is why I came to politics in the first place out of concern for the issues surrounding the neglect of long-term care. Having witnessed it personally uh, with my family members, I know how hard it is on families, having witnessed it as a physician for almost 30 years. And so there is no doubt that I have a sense of responsibility for this, and I have said it repeatedly. I do not know why this does not seem to register with the, the, the member opposite, the leader of the opposition. She does not seem to want to acknowledge that for some reason. We are taking responsibility for a broken system. And COVID moved so fast. We heard this time and time again. You know, a home would be fine at the beginning of the week. And within days, it was a war zone. I have said that repeatedly. So speed Response. was of the essence to work with our medical officers of health, the chief medical officer of health, Ontario Health, the acute care sector, to bring to bear on these homes the support that they needed. Uh, and, and we can. Thank you. Final supplementary. Here, what's clear is the ministers uh, in this government were protecting each other and worried about things going public instead of protecting seniors and worrying about them. Uh, in fact, on March 30, 2020, uh, this minister stood with the Premier and claimed that there was going to be an iron ring put around long-term care, which we all know never happened. On March 31st, the next day, the minister's own staff were pleading for more PPE in long-term care. And then, of course, in early April, a few days later, the Minister of Finance is 
begging the RNAO to send nurses into Orchard Villa, pleading for help. I ask this minister one more time, Speaker, when did she know that seniors in long-term care homes in Ontario were dying of neglect and dehydration? Minister of care. Thank you, Speaker. And I've, I've told the member uh, opposite repeatedly uh, that the reason we called in the military was because the speed with which COVID moved in some homes uh, made the homes into a war zone. It happened very quickly. The premise of your question uh, is, is bordering on obscene. And, 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 I, and the reason why Order. is because all of the ministry, public health, medical officers of health, thousands of people have been working to shore up these homes, and they were no match for COVID-19. And so to impugn, to impugn that there was any attempt uh, in terms of what you have just said uh, is, is inaccurate, is not based on any fact, it is unfounded. What we were doing Response. 24 hours a day was trying to get support to those homes with an unknown virus that wasn't fully understood, with a sh you know, shortage of, of supplies globally, we were taking every measure and working collaboratively with all the partners to solve this problem. And I reject the... Thank you. The next question. Again, the Leader of the Opposition. It's also for the Minister of Long-Term Care, but I can assure her what is obscene and what Ontarians think is obscene is 4,000 seniors dying in COVID, uh, from COVID-19 in long-term care because they didn't do their jobs. But look, the Canadian Armed Forces, again to the Minister, uh, arrived on uh, April 29th. They started uh, to go into the homes, uh, and of course their report was released on May 29th. Uh, certainly in between the time they arrived and the time the report uh, was made public, this Minister would have received some kind of updates as to what was happening in these long-term care homes yet. On May 19th, the minister told this house, and I quote, our government has acted quickly and responsibly and will continue to take more action at a rapid pace until this pandemic is over, which we all know never happened. There was never any rapidity. So what does this minister say to families? What does she say to the families who were she was supposed to be protecting when she wasn't Question. doing so? When the armed forces found those people pleading for, for water? Let's face it, this minister needs to resign. Will she do so? Mr. Thank you, Speaker. You know, it, it, is, it is devastating to families. There's no doubt about that. I have taken responsibility for their well-being and their welfare, and it is, it is devastating to all the people who have been working around the clock, the staff, uh, the public service, uh, the frontline providers, the emergency services, the funeral homes, everyone who has come together to try and provide the support in a time of a global pandemic, a hundred year pandemic, a hundred years since the world has ever seen anything like this. And, and I want to acknowledge all of the people that have worked so hard uh, to provide the care to these homes. That is, you know, when that fails, uh, that is what we had to do, is call in the military. And I understood the need to get them in swiftly, but even the military took a number of days to come in. And so when we look at the speed with which COVID moves, Response. we need to understand the learning process that the whole world was going through and all the people that were working so hard to support these homes, the residents and staff and families. Thank you. Supplementary question. For over a year, this minister denied the crisis in long-term care instead of stopping it. She refused to support seniors in long-term care. She stood by the Premier's fallacy of a ring, an iron ring around long-term care. She actually said in this House that they were moving quickly and reasonably, literally while the Canadian Armed Forces were, were finding people dying of neglect in long-term care homes. Speaker, this minister has tried to save the Ford government and save her own reputation instead of saving people in long-term care. How can anybody expect this minister can fix things when she can't even admit to her mistakes? Will she resign today? 
today take ministerial accountability for the things she was supposed to do and didn't do to protect seniors in long-term care. Minister of Long-Term Care to reply. Thank you, Speaker. If the Leader of the Opposition had done her job during the time that the previous Order. government Order. neglected long-term care, if you had been a voice, if you had taken the opportunity that you had, years and years of runway that you wasted, that the Leader of the Opposition closed her eyes to. Go back to the Hansard. Look how many times she even bothered Order. to mention the long-term care word. Look at your failure. I was left to pick up the pieces from a devastating 15 years of neglect. I will not be spoken to that way by the Leader of the Opposition that order. neglected this sector opposition and the opposition at the time neglected this sector. Order. 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 Just a second. I'm going to remind all members to make their comments through the chair, not directly across the floor at each other. This is the final supplementary. Speaker, this minister has not even committed to implementing the recommendations of the commission. It is un fathomable that she didn't simply say, yes, we're going to implement every one of those recommendations. Instead, what we saw was staff literally being abandoned by their minister during this crisis. Many of them have now left the sector, and understandably so. We now have an immediate staffing crisis that is worse than when COVID-19 hit Ontario in the first place. The commissioner said clearly, staff need higher wages right now. Staff need full-time work right now. We need more staff right now, not three years from now, not two years from now, right now. Five days later, the minister still refuses to apologize, still, as you just saw, will not admit to her failure. Question. This minister needs to resign. Will she finally do what she should do, resign from her position? Minister of Long-Term Care. Thank you, Speaker. You know, I really don't know where the Leader of the Opposition is coming up with this, this, uh, um, this distortion. Our government has addressed on a continuing basis, even as I became the Minister of Long-Term Care, looking at the staffing, looking at the capacity building, and we've been doing this all throughout the pandemic with a sense of urgency, understanding the need for this, for this sector. In the first wave with the pandemic pay, we were able to hire 8,600 and more staff into long-term care. We began uh, before that with a staffing expert panel to inform us on what we would could do to improve the staffing. We have uh, created capacity in our colleges, our public colleges, for over 8,000 students to be trained by, by the fall. Uh, we have another uh, pro program with uh, career colleges and, uh, and district school boards. Uh, we have an Re Ontario Reserve Response. Senior Support System that we arranged in the first wave. I do not understand where you're, you're, you're getting this information from. We've been very clear. We're building the capacity. We're building the staff. We're building the IPAC. We're doing all these recommendations and working on them, uh, some of them prior. Thank you. The next question, once again, Leader of the Opposition. Thank you, Speaker. My next question this morning is uh, to the Minister of Health. Um, the CEO of the Registered Nurses uh, said that the Minister of Finance called her uh, about the crisis unfolding in his riding in Orchard Villa. Uh, and I'm going to again quote from her testimony. So I got the phone call at about 11 p.m. one day, and in that phone call was the minister telling me, can I help with Orchard Villa, before things were public, that it was a disaster what had happened with the residents, and he was, an excruciatingly, he was excruciatingly in pain. So the government knew, Speaker, what was unfolding in long-term care. Ministers knew what was happening in the long-term care sector. They knew the staffing problems were serious and that people were losing their lives, that people were abandoned in their rooms. Did the Minister of Health receive the same phone call with the same information and the same plea from the Minister of Finance? Reply, the government House Leader. 
Uh, again, Mr. Speaker, as the, uh, the Leader of the Opposition will know, and I would certainly hope that uh, members opposite were, uh, were doing the same thing that members on this side of the House were doing. We're engaging with, uh, uh, with our community members, whether it was long-term care, retirement homes, uh, uh, individuals of, uh, in community support groups, Mr. Speaker. We were all engaging and we were all working very hard to see how we could help. I, I, I don't see how the member opposite, the Leader of the Opposition opposite, can suggest that members of Parliament shouldn't be doing that on a daily basis, especially given the fact that this is a global health and economic pandemic but the Minister of long-term care is quite correct many of the issues that we faced were issues that we inherited after decades of neglect in the sector we have made a commitment to make uh, make them better we inherited a system that was woefully underfunded we inherited a system uh, that had not been uh, built out that did not have spaces I had a hundred and eighteen year waiting list in my riding before this government was elected mr. speaker uh, we're making changes to make lives better for the Response. people in long-term care, Mr. Speaker. It's a responsibility we all have, all of us on both sides of the House, and we all will get the job done for seniors. Well, speaker, what this minister forgot to mention is that the Ford government was cutting long-term care in 2019's budget, and in 2018, one of the first things they did was cancel the comprehensive resident quality inspection. So they really do have a problem with their own history. But look, the same minister, the same minister that de denied more funding for long-term care in February knew that there was a disaster unfolding. He wouldn't cough up the money. The disaster continued to unfold. The entire Ford cabinet knew what was going on, and yet they all continued to claim there was an iron ring around long-term care. How is that possible? The Minister of Long-Term Care, the Minister of Health, the Minister of Finance, now the government house leader, none of them will take any responsibility for 4,000 seniors losing their lives in long-term care Question. because they wouldn't spend the money and they wouldn't act quickly enough to save those lives. They all need to take some responsibility. When will they? Government House Leader. Uh, let's be very clear, Mr. Speaker. We will accept responsibility for the things that uh, that uh, uh, fall under our watch, and that's why we are making significant investments. Uh, but to be clear, Mr. Speaker, uh, all legislatures for a number of years share the responsibility of the woeful inadequacy in this sector. Woeful inadequacy of this of this sector, a sector that had not been invested in for decades. We immediately moved to make investments in long-term care. Before the election, we talked about ending hallway health care. That is why the Minister of Health brought forward Ontario Health Teams, a blanket of care, Mr. Speaker, that included long-term care, included, included acute care, included uh, ICUs, home care for communities, Mr. Speaker. We've made those investments, Mr. Speaker. We're adding homes every single day, the largest build-out of long-term care in the history of this province, Mr. Speaker. What happened is completely Response. unacceptable. We accept responsibility for those things, Mr. Speaker, but to be clear, generations of parliamentarians who have sat in this place have failed seniors, but we will make sure that that stops, and we started to make sure it stopped in 2000. Order. Yep. The opposition